HGH <coughs> was invented by a Dr. Dan Rudman when his parents began to age prematurely in their 70s. And originally it was used for children. Prematurely? In their 70s? Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking fragile, frail. I don't just mean get older. I mean like they couldn't get out of a chair. Okay. When they were 72 or something. And it, it had been used to treat children that have that aging. Progeria. Disease. You yes, know, the, progeria. Yeah. And it had been successful. And then it had been used for children who are on borderline dwarfism because it makes you grow. Right. And anyway, he decided to use it with older people. By the time he discovered it and was able to do, do tests, his parents had died. And he did tests on people between 60 and 70 something. And he found that HGH increased muscle, grew hair, thickened skin, uh, increased energy, increased libido, did everything, it was like a wonder drug. But he only researched this for six months and his caveat was HGH makes your human growth cells grow, multiply, including uh, the, the dormant cells you have as you get older, including your cancer cells. So if you have dormant cancer cells, aging is a way to protect you from dying of cancer. In other words, as you age, your cells die off. Well, the cancer cells die off too. Right. That's why you, we, you may get old and wrinkled and feeble, but you're also getting less chances of getting cancer as you get old. So he was worried that this HGH would cause, cause cancer. So he recommended that it be studied for years and years before it was used. Naturally, that didn't happen. It became an anti-aging drug. A lot of young hip guys take it for sex because it, uh, it promotes sexual activity. But the big hidden thing was vast increase in energy levels for people over 40. What do starting pitchers need? Energy. Perfect drug for Roger Clemens. Testosterone is not a perfect drug that, grow, that builds muscle. You know, that muscle is not necessarily what you need as a starting pitcher, but increased energy. You imagine a guy in his early 40s whose legs start getting wobbly in the fourth or fifth inning, take HGH, and they don't get wobbly anymore. Do you think that Barry Bonds took that stuff? I don't know. I don't know. How do you go for 168 pounds or 228 pounds when you're 40 for muscle? <laughs> I guess you've answered that question. Uh, you, you talk about Carlton Fisk when he was, I think, uh, 36 or 38. He was an old man for a catcher. And in, in the winter of 1984, he took up weightlifting big time. Right. A brutal workout schedule. Yeah, it would leave him w leave him literally wobbly. As well. Right. And my question is, if Fisk could build up tremendously uh, greater muscle and endurance just by doing that, nobody's ever associated Fisk with drugs. Right. Well, why couldn't that have happened to Bonds and Clemens as they claimed it did? Well, because it's more hard work. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean. But you don't think it did happen? Well, I mean, you with, made with, that. You with made Fisk? That. I don't know anything about Fisk. I don't, I, no, I no, don't I, know. I don't mean Fisk. Yeah. But there was no HGH in those days. Yeah. I, mean, I know he didn't take HGH. He could have, he could have taken steroids. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, why did it? I, I don't know. A shortcut? I mean, Jose Canseco, the biggest drug user in baseball, is the laziest guy in baseball. He never liked to work out, so he took drugs instead. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.